after the washing was finished and we were able to uh, not only with safe lights turn on some other lights that we began to to see sort of what it looked like wet and I kind of liked it. I, I knew ahead of time that it was not going to be a perfect Ansel Adams kind of representation. The stuff was hand applied. We knew there were going to be some contrast problems. And I sort of loved the, the handmade look to it. Um, there were a few others that were uh, of us that were looking at it and kind of going, hmm. When I first saw it, I was, um, I think, a little disappointed because it has a real ephemeral, handmade quality to it. It's more like an impressionistic painting than a photograph. And not knowing what to expect, I think I was thinking more in the photographic, detailed kind of area. I'll remember uh, Jerry Birchfield and I standing, uh, after we processed it, we hoisted it back up so that it was vertical again and so that it could dry overnight. And I'll never forget standing with Jerry the next day uh, on the floor of the hangar, looking up at the thing. And we both just l looked at each other, looked back at it, looked at each other, and, and we were afraid to say. And, I, and finally, we both said at the same time, what do you think? And both of us went, I don't know. If you stay with an image for a while, it just things emerge from that beyond just the representational aspects. Because <laughs> it wasn't your normal looking photograph. It was very painterly because of the, what had happened when we had to uh, coat the emulsion on it. And we didn't know that was going to occur until we actually saw the image hang there. You know, it's somewhere between a painting and a photograph. And the final print, in a way, requires that you enter into it in different ways. It's not immediately accessible. You have to decipher it. You have to kind of the scale overwhelms you, and then you start picking out all the detail. I have grown to absolutely love its texture and the ephemeral quality about it. And in many areas, the detail is exceptional. Um, it may be hard to see from the ground, but when you get up close to it, I mean, it's, it's pretty phenomenal. So I'd say we succeeded admirably. The thing I most love about it is that it's a giant full circle statement about photography. It's a tremendously huge hand-coded black and white negative and it's a digital positive. It's a, it's a photo from the very beginnings of photography made with a camera obscura, the earliest technology. And it's a digital image that then travels around the world overnight. So it's a bracket around all of photography. I've been kind of designated to uh, to talk a little bit about our friend and my partner many years, Jerry Birchfield, who was indeed the, the inspiration to start this whole project. Uh, Jerry and I go back, uh, well, did go back for uh, several decades. Uh, we, we started a business called BC Space, he being the B and me being the C, and we dedicated ourselves to doing unusual and exotic things with the then budding art of photography and hopefully laying to rest the idea that whether it is art or not, that was the debate at that time. And uh, th that group uh, has extended into um, many relationships. Rob Johnson and Jerry wound up teaching together uh, at Cypress College. Uh, and Clayton Spada uh, also was over there. And then after Jerry was forced because of economic realities to leave BC, he dragged me over to Cypress. And so that became the genesis for this, this whole project was um, taking a class from Cypress College to the El Toro Marine Corps Air Station, which was the subject of great controversy in Orange County as to whether it was going to become a commercial airport or a greater cultural benefit to the county itself. <laughs> Clayton and, and Jerry and Mark did scope the area out to try to find a building that would allow us to see a picture that was representative of the present, past, and history of what was going on at the base. So the foreground of the picture, if you look at the top one, the foreground are actually the runways, which pay homage to what the base was because it was the major hub of soldiers going to different wars over the last 50 years. The control towers, again, the heart and soul of the base itself, 
and the hills beside more of a reference to what was going to happen to the greenlands and the park that was going to take place. So the picture pays homage to the past, present, and future. If there ever was a photo that really isn't of something but about something, then this is it. And I think it's about all kinds of stuff. It has a U U.S. military base shooting its own picture. It has the beginning of photo history and then becoming a digital positive and going around the world, you know, overnight, literally. It has just layer after layer after layer of both actual history of the place embedded in it as well as photo history embedded in it. I don't know. It really is more about things than what the image is at all. To me, one of the, most, one of the key components to art is invention. And there were many inventions that had to be, be, be made here. That's the, that's the part that I think titillates artists. In fact, a good friend of mine who has worked on making the spindle for the great picture, uh, Larry Gill, he had a way of describing art as that the first time it happens, it might be art. The second time, it's a product. six of us have been together now for 10 years working as the Legacy Project. And uh, that part of it has been absolutely a fabulous experience in terms of just the great picture part, uh, not only working with other members of the Legacy Project, but with 100 plus assistants out there periodically trying to do this enormous project with the hope that it would come out and only having one opportunity really to try it. For me, the most memorable part of this project was spending, as a photographer, several months essentially living in a camera. When we were actually making the final exposure, all of us knew after that that was the last time that we were ever going to see the real projected image. So when, when, we put, when we closed the shutter, which was essentially putting a plastic cloth over it, I knew that that was the last time that we were going to see the projected image and that evening we were going to actually punch out the front of the camera obscure and it would be no more. That, that would probably be the, the emotional punctuation mark on it for me. I just want to say a couple words about Jerry Birchfield, who was not only a dear friend, um, who passed away two years ago on September 11th. Um, Jerry was the the forerunner of this project. He's the one who actually came up with the original idea, moved it forward, got us to go to the base and start this incredible documentation, and had an energy and a love for what he was doing that was infectious to all of us. Um, he is sorely missed, um, not only as a comrade and a collaborator, but also as a dear friend. And it would be remiss not, not to give a heads off to him. He would love to have been here. None of this would have happened without his energy. <laughs>